you can join in the conversation. Any questions or any comments you might have are on Twitter. Just use hashtag MKTDAY or you can follow me at Daganix or email us at your money at skynews.com.au. We will try to answer all questions that come by our email system. Let's get straight into it. Julia Lee, really up and down sort of session. Uh, were you surprised that we did in fact make it into positive territory in the end? James, a lot of traders will be disappointed with the session today. Given that we saw such great leads overnight, we saw European markets soaring after the Constitutional Court in Germany approved of the bailout of Greece in terms of the European Financial Stability Fund. Of course, we saw the US markets breaking that three-day losing streak. The Australian market, as you can see from the intraday graph behind me, was off to a good start, but the turning point came in when we got our job numbers coming through for August. It was a surprise loss of 9,700 jobs and you can see just the impact that had on the Australian share market. We didn't manage to claw back a lot of those losses in the end, finishing pretty flat up, just four points. But I guess the market also looking to the jobs speech tonight by Obama. A lot of that speech has already been leaked to the market, but some hope there that perhaps we will see stimulus and job creation measures come through in terms of the US markets. But altogether, a pretty disappointing performance by the Australian market, really being driven by local factors, that is our job numbers, and the volume is very disappointing, $4.9 billion. And for a Thursday, that's very weak. In fact, the worst Thursday we've seen in around about seven weeks. So we were speaking earlier this week and suggestions caught between a couple of trends, positive and negative, depending on the time frame that you're looking at it. I noted we bounced again off that uh, five-day moving average. What is that, I think, 41.66? Sure. In terms of the short-term trends, we are bouncing between two points. If I can bring up a chart, and we'll just have a look at the 30-day on the ASX 200, this is what it looks like. You can see very clearly where the floor is. We've touched that three times now in the last 30 days and the bottom of that floor is 4,075 points. The top part of course is just over that 4,300 point mark and the high that we've seen in the last 30 days is 4,350 points and the market really does seem to be consolidating between those two points. Of course rather than being led by the technicals or the fundamentals the market is being driven by the big picture themes at the moment and that's why tonight's going to be so important. In the next 24 hours, we get speeches from Trouche, Bernanke, as well as Obama. So it is going to be a heavy 24 hours, and no doubt market direction is going to be determined by speeches, some very important speeches tonight. So it is going to be a big month. September is expected to be quite a volatile month because of the number of key events out there for markets. But in terms of the technicals, we are seeing consolidation, but that's really until we see some direction coming through from the big picture themes, that is the, uh, the US economy as well as the Euro debt situation. Situation. This joint bid, if you like, from ArcelorMittal and Peabody Energy. Um, China's Citic Group not too happy at the moment. Suggestions they've been hoping of uh, an Anglo offer, but that looks to uh, have had the pin pulled. Look, there is talk that uh, talks between Anglo-America and Citic have fallen apart. And if we have a look at Citic, it is still the largest shareholder of MacArthur Coal with just under a 25% holding talk that they're holding out for an offer of around about the $18 mark. Now if we have a look at Anglo America, it does have the balance sheet to be able to do a deal like this. It's got about cash of $6 billion. Um, it also has facilities, undrawn facilities of around about $9 billion. But there is some talk that it is looking at another play, so making a takeover offer for another company at $7.5 billion. So it does look like City trying uh, in a race to be able to get a bid together, but it does look like Anglo America may be out of the picture that's according to a Reuters report this is also an article in the Financial Times as well around this so it does look like the Peabody Aslo Mittal bid is still the top one on the table the only bid on the table at that $16 mark of course if we have a look at major shareholders uh, companies like Citic which uh, with just under 25% and POSCO with around about the 7% mark really hold strategic states stakes in MacArthur coal to gain access to the product so I guess in terms of um, a takeover bid is really about being able to still access the product. At the moment, though, there's still only one bid on the table, around the $16 mark. Civic thinks it'll be probably nice to be get, getting a bid around the $18 mark, but it does look like talks between Citic and Anglo-America may have fallen apart. Thoughts on that? Just rumour trage fueling some of these spikes? Well, there does, does certainly seem to be a bit of interest around in the retailers. JB Hi-Fi, of course, was a standout, getting 4.3% today, but we also saw Harvey Norman gaining 2.9%. Mm. But I guess before we get too excited, just having a look at the 52-week graph, and this is JB Hi-Fi, so it does look like 
trying to get a bottom in place, but the same sort of chart for Harvey Norman. We've seen prices falling substantially in terms of the retail space. We know that institutional investors have started to be active. I mean, if we have a look at a couple of weeks ago, Matthews Capital, a hedge fund, showed up on the David Jones register with around about a 5% stake. So I guess these retailers looking attractive on a long-term basis. It really depends if we start to see some spending and some positive sentiment comes through. But it certainly does look like there has been a bit of interest. It's probably a little bit too early to get excited. But certainly if you have a look at these charts, it does look like in terms of Harvey Norman trying to form a base. So we'll be watching these charts closely to see whether it can form an uptrend.